Welcome to Kempo University. My name is Al Babinick and I'm your instructor. Today we're talking about the zone of sanctuary, which is the circle in the square principle. Now in my school, I have the universal pattern up on the wall, but a lot of times you don't see the square around it, where what I did is I put the square in there. So let's take a look at the circle in the square principle. So we have a couple of circles. So we have the circle on the outside, we have the circle on the inside. And then the square is, I always just have my blue line going here. So here's, we're talking about the big circle. So here's the big circle inside the square. When you're looking at the universal pattern, you can think of a few different ways. Is that you know either that your arm is shorter than your leg. So if we take a look at uh, the arm, the inner circle right there represents like an arm swing because it's shorter than the outer circle which could represent a leg swing. Now it doesn't really matter because we could put us we could put this circle inside of a square but I have this circle inside of a square and you can see the squares coming out and you're still getting hit at the edge of the circle. Where you're safe the zone of sanctuary is out in this white area over here where it's clear. So when you're, if you just, if you're right there, the tip of the knife is still going to get you. But if you move slightly over here, the knife's not going to get you, but you're still as close to the center or as close to the person as you can be. So if I jump way over here, it's just harder to get back in. If I just lean or move slightly off to the side, I could get back in a lot faster. And what we're going to take a look at is that, let's say this was their arm. So if this is their arm, my leg is longer. So if I move here, their arm won't be able to get me, but I'll still be able to kick them because my leg's longer, okay? And we're gonna take a look at that. So let's check out some examples. So for the zone of sanctuary, I'm standing here, Ted's over there, if he takes a swing at me, you'll see he should be able to hit me right in the temple. Go ahead, take a swing. He should be able to hit me right in the temple. So if I move back, he could probably lean in and still get me. If I move over to this corner, he could still lean in and get me because it's after the apex, so he can lean and hit. If I'm here and he swings and I just move slightly off to this corner, the zone of sanctuary, then he's club's going to pass me by. When he swings back, I go, oh, no, you're not. And I can do defying this, or uh, returning storm. Sorry, we're doing returning storm. So from here, he moves in. I can lean back just a little bit as he's swinging back. I try to get him before he swings back, but we got the, the uh, technique. I could grab, step back, break his arm, throw him that way. You know the technique, I hope. So that's returning storm, and that's where if... I was on the circle, he's here, the club's coming around, club's going to hit me in the temple right here. If I lean back this way, he can still lean and get me a little bit. If I move over this way, he still might be able to lean and get me a little bit unless I go way over here. But if I lean this way, that's where it's already past the apex of the circle, he can't go backwards and try to hit me. So that's the zone of sanctuary as far as like a club goes. And that's the same thing with punches. That's it with the club. Now, let's take a look at it with, uh, after, after takedown. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the zone of sanctuary with dance of death. And we're really just looking at the last move of the extension, where Ted's gonna be on the ground, his arm's gonna be swinging like this, and even if he could barely touch my leg, he shouldn't be able to grab my ankle and pull or anything like that. I barely want to be outside of his hand because my leg is longer, I'll be able to go in and kick him. So on Dance of Death, he's laying on this line. I'm going to jump off to a corner so I can make everything work. And so we'll go a little slower so you can see everything that's going on here. All right, uh, let's take a look at it. So he throws the punch, I get my parry, 
and a, my positional check hitting up to the groin, and then I'm stepping through. I'm gonna do the knee lift version, so I knee lift elbow, take the guy down, get that leg out of the way, raise this up, finger whip to the groin. Keeps him from doing anything. I get the heel, and I'm pushing down on the top of the toes. He's down on the ground. Make sure you chamber, stomp on his back, chamber. If he starts getting up, it's no, get back down there. That's what that's for. Bring your hand back up, stomp to the back, step out, and I'm at my corner, so when I pull my foot out, if he swings his arm, he's barely hitting my ankle. But I can still get in there and stomp him in the neck as I'm crossing out. Thank you, Ted. So when you're throwing people to the ground, you're gonna step off and stomp to the head, whether it's uh, the backbreaker, whether it's this technique, where you have somebody on the ground, you don't wanna be within their arm range you, because you're using a leg. That's where the zone of sanctuary comes in. Thank you for watching this video production from Kempo University.